I did to come here. But get moving. Somebody wants to see a melody. So tell them to look. Yeah, well, you'd better look. Standing right over there. I'm so glad to see you. When'd you get out? Relax, yes. kid. Relax. Rode the rods all night to get here. Oh, swell. Did you break out? Good behavior. <laughs> where can we talk? Outside. Come on. Hey, you. Where are you going? Outside. This is my pal. You're on the ivory. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll be back. Maybe. Be back in ten minutes or you're out of business. Uh, with you in town, that piano job don't mean nothing. Do you have anything in mind? Yeah. Something really big. Where is it? Ain't far. Only the big boy ain't okayed me yet. He'll okay me. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. Sounds like an interesting setup. If you win on it, it's worth a million. Big stuff grows in strange places, eh, my lady? <laughs> Here it grows out of test tubes. Hmm. What do you want, Melody? I want to see the doctor. I got the right guy to handle that job for him. What is your friend's name? Grusom. Isn't he? Come in. Our employer is in the midst of an experiment. Your friend will have to wait. Go back and finish your job. I don't need that job now. Go anyhow. I'll handle the doctor. Okay, I'll see you tonight, huh? Boy, am I glad you're in town. Make yourself comfortable. But please don't touch anything. No? Why? It isn't advisable. Come on, Mac, up. Oh, come on, come on, get up on there. What's the trouble, Carney? Oh, just another junk. This is the fifth time I've called the wagon tonight. I'm on my way down to headquarters to pick up Dick Tracy. Can I take him along for you? Don't that I'd appreciate, Pat. Well, where is he? He's laying in the doorway of that joint back there.
That's funny, Pat. Not enough alcohol to have killed him. Yet no pulse and no heartbeat. So what did the big lug die of? A broken heart? I don't know, but Doc Ross can tell you tomorrow after the autopsy. I've been in this racket a long time, but I've never seen anything like this before. You say he was limp when you picked him up ten minutes ago? Limp as a playboy's alibi. Ten minutes later, he's like this. Then it wasn't time for rigor mortis to set in. No time at all. Want to take a guess at what's eating him? Yes, I could guess, but it wouldn't mean anything. Except I think it's a case for homicide. Careful of your language, Frankie. He died in my car. But he didn't get whatever is wrong with him in your car. Right. So a corpse coming out of Hangman's knot's got to be murder, huh? Mm, probably. You say you found this on him? Loaded for bear. And his suit had the feel of a big house hand-me-down. Mm -hmm. That's sharp observing. <laughs> Ain't it? Why don't you have Tracy take a look at him? I think I will. But if he has the answer to a drunk turning to stone, I give up. Hi, Sarge. I wouldn't go in there now, Pat, if I was you. You mean I shouldn't go in? Nobody. Dick's got a VIP in there. VIP? Dick? A very important personage. In that case, I'll knock. Excuse me, Dick, but I think I just brought in a homicide. Anyway, he's a mighty funny stiff. Funny? I'll be right with you. Come over to the morgue, huh? Right. I'm sorry, Dr. Thomas. Go on. For instance, when I'd arrive home at night, I'd find figures lurking in the shadows near my house. Why didn't you report this sooner? I... Well, I hoped that my wife and I were wrong. These people weren't really stalking me at all. What makes you so sure they were? When two attempts were made within a week to run me down by car. We have a lot of reckless drivers in this town, Doctor. Yes, I know, but... Why do you think someone wanted to kill you? I don't know. I've no idea. Of course, like many scientists, I'm working on new and rare formulae at the university all the time. Very little we can do for you, Doctor, but offer you police protection. I dislike troubling you, but I am worried. Well, Chief, this isn't a case for me, so if you don't Run mind... Run along, Dick. We'll take care of the doctor. I'm sorry I can't stay, but my assistant has a slight case of homicide on his hands. Good luck. Now, see here, Doctor. Let's review the facts. Pat. Pat. Mm, did you get his number? Sure, sure. What happened, Pat? Oh. Oh, you're asking me. I'm sitting here, see, writing out this report on the stiff. All of a sudden, blackout. Something hit me here. A crowbar, maybe, or a small bulldozer. I don't see how anybody could have got in here, Dick. Frankie put the stiff on this slab. He was out cold, just like he is now. Uh, the stiff, the mug, where is he? 
Looks like you had a drunk who woke up, Pat. He just outboxed you, that's all. Outboxed me, huh? I tell you, he was dead. Oh, don't look at me like that, Dick. You know I haven't had so much as a short beer since I joined the force. I tell you, I brought in an absolutely dead stiff. Okay, but if that's true, then you're just confused. There's a stiff in the other room. What? Why didn't you say so? Come on. What I want to know is who moved that stiff to the stiff. So he outboxed me, did he? What's that make you? I admit it, Pat. He tricked me, too. One minute he's dead. The next he slugs me, tricked you and bamboozed. Smart man. Smart? He's weird. I tell you, if I didn't know better, I'd swear we were doing business with Boris Karloff. Looks that way. Melody. Did you find him? Would I be back here without him if I did? Oh, that stuff he got must have killed him. Nonsense. It was one of the early experiments of the doctor's medical formula. But what did it do to him? Potent but harmless. It just rendered him helpless. Helpless? Oh, that's great! Gruesome helpless and the cops hot on his trail? Exactly. So he is of no use to us any longer. If he does come back, you must tell him the deal is off. What are you talking about? That guy knows his way around. He is no good to us now. We must be rid of him. The doctor... The doctor will be disturbed by your stupid chatter. You'll get rid of who? No, no, please! Please, Gruesome, he didn't mean it. He needs you. We all need you, Gruesome, please! Exactly. As the doctor just said, you know your business, but I know mine. You, you mean you spoke to the doctor? Yes, I've had a talk with him. You're a disgraced doctor of science, correct? Yes, but I... No buts. The doctor stumbled on a great racket, but he needs me to make it work for him. So from now on, you two will do exactly what I say. Now get in there, keep your mouth shut and listen. Tomorrow is the most important day in your stupid lives. minutes to go. Hey, Harry, come here. I told you to get that cat out of here. Now get him out. Hello, Mr. Stone. 10, 20, 30. How's Mr. Tracy? Well, he's fine, thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Time to perfectly the air is clear. Lock the door. Hey, Grusom, I wonder if you look as silly as they do. Lock the door. Mm 
matter, buddy? Dandruff? Melody. Yeah, yeah, come on, Goose. Homicide, quickly. Hello, Dick. Listen, I'm inside the Grove Street branch of the First National Bank, witnessing a robbery. Dead? Frozen? Uh-oh. Okay, honey, don't lose your nerve. We'll be right there. This is Tracy. Notify all cars in the area of 4th and Grove. Bank robbery, First National. before he hit the ground. Move these people back. Move back a little, folks. Come on, move back. Come on, move back. Take care of everything, Jim. Okay, Dick. Tess! Tess, come out of it. Come out of what? I'm all right. Whew. Well, she's alive anyway. If I hadn't been in the booth, I'd have gotten it, too. But you see... Wait a minute. Aim it on Thursday, or the bank will be forced to foreclose. But I tell you, I can't. You heard the man say they want a cash bonus? Oh, that's it. Mr. Crandall. Mr. Crandall. The dollar's worth of change, please. Yes, of course. Thank you. You'll have to leave now, sir. It's 3 o'clock. You see, pal, you were only half dead. I don't question your word, Mr. Tracy. There undoubtedly was a bank robbery, but not here. <laughs> not here. <laughs> they sent you to the wrong bank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Banks, yes. over $100,000 has disappeared. Oh, that's fine. Right under our noses. What? This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Two minutes ago, everybody was paralyzed. Frozen, stiff, and now look at them. They're perfectly normal. No one leaves until everybody's been questioned. Line them all up over there. Right, man. This way, folks. How many men in the stick-up crew? Two. Did they wear masks? No. One was coarse-looking, and the other one was... Well, fine. Tell me later. How long was it between the freezing act and their entrance? Mm, about a minute. You mean this knockout stuff was instant? Instant? Uh, right away? Well, it couldn't have been more than two minutes at the most. How do you feel? All right, Mr. Tracy. That's what's so darn queer. I still can't believe I was out cold for 12 or 14 minutes. Just wait till I tell my wife. When I get All right now, I'd rather you told me what you were doing and how you felt when this stuff hit you. Sure, you bet. Like I was telling your sidekick here, I'm standing right here watching the clock, see? Not that I'm a clock-watching guy ordinarily. Get but... the pal, get to the pail. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, like I was telling your sidekick, you see, it's my wife's sister's birthday, and I says to myself, I says, Humphrey, when you get home... He was pulling down the shade. Yeah, that's right. How'd you know? Here, like this. Like this I was. Right about there. No. 
Here, maybe. Or did you feel yourself slipping? Nah, positively no warning at all. You think you were the first one affected by this gas? No, the first man to go was standing right over there. Well, show me how he was standing. All right. As I remember, he was standing right here with his coat open, like this. Well, that's enough. Take him with you, Pat, and see if you can find that man. Come on. Or was it like this? Relax, Gabby. Let's find I the guy. I had one hand sticking out. Now, let's see. You've had everyone in the bank checked on. Everyone. They all have legitimate addresses. No suspicious characters. And you're having this screwy gas analyzed. Fred has what was left in the shell casing. I expect to report any minute. And the getaway car was stolen. Picked up on the turnpike. No distinguishable fingerprints. The banking commission is panicky, Dick. If this gets to the papers, they're afraid of a wholesale run on every bank in town. I told you Tracy was busy. It's okay, Sarge. Tracy wants to see me, right? Dick has nothing to say to the press, Dan. No? In that case, the press has a hot word for him. It's headline. Shall I go? It's okay, Sarge. Thanks. What I have to say should be private, boys, for your sake. Spill it, Dan. We're busy. I know, and stumped. Fellas, I was the only news hawk to get to a certain bank before you had everybody's mouth buttoned up like a West Pointer on inspection. How much do you know, Dan? Remember the bank guard with the end of gas? You can't spend a word of it, Dan. Look, Dick, I play ball usually, but not with gas bombs. This will be the biggest thing hit the streets since George Patton broke the bulb. This is a war of a sort, too, Dan. A war on small investors. If you break silence before we can move in, no bank in the state can escape a run on it. How long do you want? 24 hours. I'll settle for the four. That'll get me in the final edition. We don't have a thing in four hours. That bad, eh? Right now, we haven't got a lead to the of bloodhounds. So then I think my readers should know what they're up against. Give us till morning, at least, Dan. Say, Dick, this is an absolutely unknown chemical. We've given it up. Yeah. Why don't you look before you yap? Unknown chemical. 20 people frozen to the spot by absolutely unknown chemical while bank is casually robbed of at least 200 grand. It was only 100. Thanks, that much I didn't know. Until morning, Dan, please. We don't sell a morning paper, Dick. Exclusive, Dan. You can sell it to the syndicates. To hit the morning rags, I'd have to have all the details by 2 a.m. 2 a.m., you hide binder. Well, that's only 10 hours from now. You're quick, Chief. Okay, Dan, it's a deal. 2 a.m. Good luck. I'm sorry, Chief. Forget I... it. That ferret could dig salt out of Big Rock Candy Mountain. This chemical is so new, it isn't even registered. Is that it, Fred? Yeah, that's right, Dick. Think Dr. Tommy at State University could spot it? Sure, if anyone could. Tommy, that's the man who was complaining about threats on his life. Yes, top flight physicist. Look, Chief, with only 10 hours before the panic hits, it's about... It's worth a try. What else have we got? Well, there's always Pat's living corpse, but... Oh, that. A shot in the dark. So is this. But if Tommy can tell us what it is, we at least have a lead. May I help you? Yes, I'm Dick Tracy from headquarters. I'd oh, like I'm to... so glad you've come, Mr. Tracy. Have you any news of him? Of whom? Of Dr. Tomic. Isn't that why you're here? But I came to see him. Is anything wrong? Well, yes, but I... I thought you knew. He's disappeared. When? He left home early this morning and hasn't been seen since. His wife was very worried, and I thought she reported his absence to you. The first I've heard of it. Are you his assistant? Yes, I'm Professor Learned. You will find him, won't you, Mr. Tracy? We'll certainly try. Can you think of any reason why Dr. Tomic would want to disappear? No. Uh, what did you have in mind? Nothing in particular. Still, I'd like you to check any special or secret formula he might have been working on, just to make sure they haven't been removed. Of course. Will you wait here, please? I'd rather come along, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Dr. Tomic always keeps his most valuable formulae in that locked cabinet. They're quite safe there. You have the keys, of course. Yes, but I'm certain nothing has been disturbed. Uh, would you open it anyway, please? Very well. Do you know what each of these bottles contains? I know they're chemical symbols, if that's what you mean. Not exactly. Could any of them, say, mixed with another chemical, form a dangerous gas? I hardly know. These particular ones are in experimental stages. Only Dr. Tomic could tell you that. How about this clear liquid on the end? What's its purpose? I really don't know. It's so new, it doesn't even have a name. New, huh? Is that so? But I'd like to... Oh, please don't touch anything, Mr. Tracy. At least until Dr. Tomic returns. If he returns, huh? You mean there's a chance that he won't? It's part of my job to see that he does. You won't mind my taking a little of this for testing? Well, I, I hardly know what to say in Dr. Tomic's absence. Perhaps we can test it here. In fact, I'd be glad to test it for you. I'd rather take it with me. 
Very well. You see, there was a bank robbery today. Some strange chemical was employed. Everyone in the bank was transfixed, frozen to the spot. Startled? Shock. You see, I work so close to science, I have every reason to dread the creation of such gases. I didn't say it was a gas. Well, what else could it be? I don't know. But it was a gas. Doesn't seem to stain or burn the surface, does it? No. Anything in it that will hurt me if I taste it? I think not, but I can't be too sure. Let's see. Tastes like water. Many chemicals do. Get me an empty bottle and a rag, will you? Professor Learned. Yes? Could a man in Tommy's position be leading a double life? Hardly. He's one of the most respected men in his profession. Yet he came to headquarters complaining of attempts on his life the night before he disappeared. It's been my experience, Professor, but that could be the act of an innocent man. Or of a man covering his tracks. Perhaps, but not Dr. Tommy. His whole life is an open book, beyond suspicion. I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Well, thank you, Professor. I'll be back when I have this analyzed. Very well, Mr. Tracy. But it isn't Walter. Probably not. You've been a big help. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Tracy. I still say you didn't have to shoot him. But Goosem, he saw us coming out of the bank. Seeing and identifying weeks, maybe months later, are two different things. But I You're just that trigger-happy young mug you always were. Better get over it. You're a fine guy to be pulling me out. Useless killing is dangerous. Well, about time. Yeah, we thought maybe you took a party. Hardly. That's good. Goosen hates Welchers. Well, I don't hate dead ones, Melody. Our employer is a man of honor. There's one for you, one for you. What are these, Valentine's? The doctor is very businesslike. That is your remuneration. Mine's kind of thin, is Not much thinner. Gruesome got the bonus for not killing a policeman. How do you like that? We don't like it. We don't like it at all. Go back and tell your employer I'm not an employee, I'm a partner. I want 50 percent. Uh, what about me? I'll pay you more than you're worth. Goodbye, X-ray. Well, I'll ask him. No, tell him. 50 percent on everything. Very well. Oh, uh, our employer told me to tell you he wishes you would not come to the laboratory anymore. At all? At all. I see. Tell him I'll do what he says for exactly 15 minutes. Oh, please. Unless, of course, you're back within that time with half the take. Better hurry, X-ray. <laughs> Gruesome, you're terrific. <laughs> Remember that, Melody. Sure, Gruesome. Sure, sure. We uh, found him right about here, Dick. Now, let's take a look around inside. Maybe we'll get a line on something. Hey, you. It's him, Dick!
him, Dick, that drunken stiff. Well, where did he go? He got away. Well, that's a lead anyway. What happened to you? What happened to me? I was standing right over there, and all of a sudden, I was... Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you. Come on, Pat, what happened to you? Okay. I was bit by a tiger. Oh, that tiger! <laughs> You're sure that you can identify this man, Tess? Yes, I'm positive he's one of the bank robbers. Good. Now, if he'll only live long enough to start talking. Dick, we've rounded up some of the people who were in the bank. They're out in the hallway. Okay, Pat, bring them in. Tess, you better wait in the chief's office. All right. Tess did identify him. Yes, but that's not enough. You've got to find one of those bank witnesses who saw him in or around the bank about 2.45. Why 2.45? Couldn't he have had the bomb at 2.30 or even before that? No. The janitor emptied the waste baskets at 2.45. So if anyone saw this bird in the bank after that time, he planted the bomb. Nurse! What's wrong? We can't die on this now. Get those people in here, Pat, quick. Okay, folks. Sorry, Dick, you'll have to leave. He's much too ill to have anyone in here now. But just two minutes, Doc. I can't do it. He only has a 50-50 chance as it is. Well, that's that. Have those people go to my office, Pat. We'll do what we can. Okay, folks, let's go. First of all, I want to thank you people for coming. Now, I'd like to ask you a few simple questions. Does anyone recognize this man? I'm sure. I never saw him before. Well, now, I'm a bank guard, you see. We know that. Of course you do. And you know that bank guards have to be observing. Now, if that man was at the bank, it stands to reason I'd remember him, don't it? It does, do you? No. I uh, could be wrong, Mr. Tracy, but I think that man passed me at the bank door. I think he was coming out as I was going in. Do you happen to recall what time that was, Mr. Fall? Yes, I do. I looked up at the clock as I came in. It was exactly 10 minutes to 3. Good. Turn around, Luke. Obviously, this man wearing the bandit's clothes is not the bandit. This is a drawing of the actual man. Would you say you'd seen this man before, Mr. Fall? I'm almost certain that's the face of the man who passed me at the bank door. Thank you. Anyone else see him? No. no. All right. That's all. Oh, one thing more. Please don't any of you discuss this case with the newspapers. That's very important. In fact, I'd rather you didn't discuss it with anyone for a day or two. And thank you again. We're going out now, Bob. Ah, but I'm coming. I yes. said... I've still got six hours, Dan, and nothing to say. Nothing to say about a top-flight scientist who's missing? Hello? You're talking Greek, Dan. I... Yes, Chief. Don't give me that. You knew Tomic was missing before I did. Just a minute, Chief. I've got the human ferret in my office. Tomic? Who's Tomic? A physicist, my boy, with an assistant named Learned, remember? I'm giving his disappearance a build-up tonight, Dick. Wait a minute, Dan. I'll call you later, Chief. You gave me your word, Dan, and I still have six hours left. Then you do think Tomic is involved in the bank robbery? I honestly don't know. But if he is, and you publish his disappearance, it might spoil everything for me. All right, six hours. But I get first break at anything you uncover, right? 
Right, Nan. Keep your nose clean. Hello, Ted. Hello, Dan. What's new? Ask your boyfriend. Dick, this will Hold it, Fred. Oh, you again. Goodbye, Dan. Be seeing you in about five hours and 22 minutes. Dick, this is the dark. Quiet. Of the <laughs> I think I know what you were going to tell me anyway. I should see a certain professor at State University right away, correct? Correct, and quick. I'll see you later, honey. But we had a date for dinner. I'm having mine with a professor. Oh, well, since it's only a professor. A beautiful feminine professor. And you expect me to be here when you get back? No. Then I will be. That's what I thought. Goodbye, Dick. Bye. I had important business. You look worried, dearest. What's the trouble? That chemical I stole for you. What did you do with it? I? I used it for my anesthetic experiments. What do you suppose? I suppose you either gave it or sold it to a gang of bank robbers. What are you talking about? The police are analyzing the water I substituted for the formula I stole for you. Well, what of it? The moment Dr. Tomic returns, they They'll know I substituted the water. Oh, we'll be far away by then. What if he returns now, tonight? He won't, Irma. You've done something to him. He's perfectly safe. He'll return home in due time. Quite unharmed. I can't. I can't go through with it. That detective, I, I can't go on lying to him. I don't know how. It won't be for long. He had hardly left when a... When a reporter came, he asked me so many questions, I, I didn't know where I was. Did he ask about Tommy? Of course. Splendid. His disappearance will make headlines. Tracy and his cops will be forced into a manhunt that will leave us in the clear. I won't help Black in the character of a decent man. I can't. Very well. Tell them. Tell them everything. Is that what you want, Irma? Well, darling, you know it isn't. But can't we do something? Can't we go away? Now, tonight? Please have requested that I don't leave town. Your friend Tracy. Tracy? Well, how... Do you think I put that formula in the hands of thugs? I placed it in the bank myself. You didn't. You couldn't. I had to, Irma. I tell you, with Tomic missing, we're in the clear. There isn't a thing to worry about, dearest. I'll drive you to within a block of your house. Huh? No, I'll walk to the cab stand. We can't let's be the scene together. Good evening. Well, Mr. Tracy, how did you get here? It was easy. Illegal, too. Illegal? What is? My breaking into your place and searching your things without a warrant. I should think so. Why did you do it? Why did you tell me I wouldn't find water in that bottle? You didn't. You're a biochemist. Why try to pretend you didn't know what was in that bottle? You forget, Mr. Tracy. You tasted whatever was in it, not I. I was so sure it wasn't water that Why? I... Why? Why? Because I can see no reason why Dr. Tomic would make such a substitution. Neither can I. In fact, I don't think he did. But obviously, he had to. He and I are the only two people who... who have the key to that lock. So I say you made the substitution, not Tomic. If what you found in that bottle really was water, and you're not just trying to trick me because of some fantastic notion that I mixed up with bandits, then all I can say is, Dr. Tomic put it there. I didn't. And, uh... Might I suggest that you spend your time looking for him instead of badgering me? I'm badgering you because I think you know something about his disappearance. Either you're shielding him or you're shielding someone else. Why? Why should I? Do I look like the kind of person who goes around shielding bank robbers and murderers? Frankly, no. But I think you got in over your head. 
And now you don't see any way out but lying. I'm not lying. I think you are. Consider this, Professor. Whoever got hold of that formula will stop at nothing to keep it. Murdering a bank guard is only the beginning. Right now, they're accused of murder. If you're involved in it, you're an accessory to murder, and your only chance of getting less than hung is to play ball on the right team. But I tell you, I don't know anything. I heard you the first time. Just the same, when I leave here, I advise you to get in touch with someone. Who? Whomever you're shielding. Tell them that no amount of money or fame or love or whatever it is you're doing it for is worth putting your neck in a noose. It's a nice neck, Professor. But that murdered bank guard had four kids. They liked his pretty well, too. Come out in two hours, go back to headquarters. Right. Hello? Hello, Lee. Yeah, call me, uh, call me my name. I can't stand it. You you you've got to take me away. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about, dearest. You'll feel better after you've had some sleep. I can't, Lee. I'm going to tell them the truth. You can't do that. Not yet, dearest. It's risky, but perhaps we'd better leave town tonight. But I thought you said you couldn't. Perhaps I can find a way. But you must meet me at once and talk this out. No, no. I know too much. Very well, Irma. If we don't figure a way out, I'll... I'll go to the police with you. But we must talk first, Irma. I'm not in this alone. Meet me at Sixton Park in ten minutes. Walk there and be sure you're not followed. Goodbye. <coughs> You can't meet her, of course. What are you doing here? I told him. I'm telling you. You can't meet her. The cops saw you in the bank. This is a frame-up between the girl and the police. Oh, nonsense. She, she is frightened, and so are you. Listen, I'll meet her. You're known to the police, too. I've handled them before. Give me the keys to your car. All right, but don't bring her here. No, sure not. Say, you spoke of a cottage on Brand Lake? Yes, that's it. Take her there. Route 76, Cottage 14. Just off the road. Tell her I'll be up later tonight. You'll convince her she mustn't go to the police? Oh, yes, I must do that. You're right. We must. Gruesome. Yeah? Take care of her. She's all I have. Sure, sure. I understand. <laughs> Get rid of that car quickly. Why? What's wrong with it? Where is she? Picked up some bullet holes on the way. She is dead. I told you to get rid of that car. You... You killed her. You killed her? What do you suppose I do? She was leaving Tracy directly to you. No, no, she wouldn't. I'd say she was. But right now, we've got to get rid of the evidence here. All of it, you understand. A 
But go start that fire. Must there be more killing? Yes, we have to. We've got to get Melody out of that hospital tonight and then clear out of here. I've been to the hospital. He's in a coma. The doctor wouldn't even let him be seen. He'll be dead by morning. You're certain of that? As certain as I can be. Good. And we're in the clear. You don't care about anyone, do you? Yes, and if you want to stay alive, you'll do as I say. Now start that fire. I'll be inside. You expect me to use that fire? Call me when it's ready. What would you do without me? I'd even find Dan and romance him if you thought it would give you a little more time. Thanks, but he's already married to a typewriter. There's one consolation, though. Those crooks are just as worried as I am. That killing that girl was an act of cold-blooded desperation. Do you think Dr. Tomic had her shot? That's anybody's guess. You trace the license number. Sure, or stolen plates. But if you put two bullets into the back end of that car, we'll pick it up in no time. Time is something I'm fresh out of. If Dr. Carver could only fix up those other two crooks so they could talk. Said he'd call me in 10 minutes. It's been 15. This is Tracy. What about that smashed up piano player? Just died. What? When? About 10 minutes ago. Thanks. Oh, no. We could have sweated it out of that guy. But he had to go die on us, too. Well, dead men tell no tales. What did you say? I said dead men tell no tales. But sometimes they do, Tess. Sometimes they do. Where are you going? See the chief. Get an okay on an idea that'll make Dan and his papers think I'm a prime heel. Mother wait no, not unless you want to end up joining Tonic. alive or dead. It's dangerous to hide you here. Dangerous for whom? All of us. Police have tried to trace the driver of my car. Uh, I'll stay here. Very well. There's a small bedroom in there. You may use it. And there's whiskey in my desk. Mm -hmm. True hospitality. Oh, doctor. Why did you close that window? The smoke from the incinerator. I see. Won't you join me in a drink? I never indulge. Uh -huh. Doctor. Yes? Come on in and join me, won't you? No, thank you. Come on in, both of you. Listen, Doctor. The smoke is blowing away from that window. Now, what are you trying to pull? All right. All right, Gruesome. Hold everything. X-ray, get rid of that bomb! Don't move, X-ray. Don't show me, Gruesome, please. News flash. Dangerous bank robbers expected to be rounded up within 12 hours. Homicide famous Dick Tracy has just revealed that one of the robbers of the Grove Street branch of the First National Bank has been captured after suffering severe injuries in a wild chase by the police. He's alive. Five minutes ago, Tracy reported that the injured bandit will be able to talk by morning. He added, and I quote, when this man talks, we will round up the most dangerous gang of criminals in this city's history. We now return you to the piano. That announcement saved your life, X-Ray. What? I need you. We've got to get Melody out of that hospital. But that's a police hospital. Why not leave them there? Yeah? To talk and spoil a perfect setup? No. We've got to risk it. What about him? What about him? He's dead and Melody isn't worse luck. Go on.
Brother Corporal Duggan in 312. We came to pick him up. Uh, uh, wait a minute. What's the name of that surgeon again? Major Allen, 291st General. He's new to me. So are you fellows? He's just been transferred from out west. Oh, well, go on up. Uh, do you know how to work it? Like the fingers on my hand. That's the gorilla, all right. They came in an army ambulance. Give me the phone, Pop. This is it. They're on their way up. Roger. Don't stop them coming down either, Pop. You wait here. If anybody questions you, you remember where you're from. 291st General. Right. Sorry, no one allowed in there. I have orders to take his temperature every four hours. Yeah? That's right. Well, in that case, I'll go in with you. How are you, Melody? Mm -hmm. Why do we bother getting birds like him well just so we can kill him? Oh, didn't it? Yeah. Lost? Me? Hardly. Just waiting for them to, uh, just waiting. Oh. Hey. What's the matter? This man is running a dangerously high temperature. You'd better send for the doctor. Not me, buddy. My orders are to stay right here. In that case, I'll do it myself. A good idea. in the wastebasket, Tim. You want me to throw it out? No, leave it there. I know, but if this stuff makes people freeze the way you say it does, I won't be of any help to you. That's right. I know, but you're unarmed. I don't like this. Hey, this stuff has started to smoke. It should. Mr. Tracy, I'm beginning to feel funny. So am I, Tim. So am I. Should be clear now. Yes, I understand. Mr. Patton told me to let him go. Huh? You're right. Here they come. Oh, sure. Patton saw the ambulance. Right, sir. Bye. Well, I see you got your man. Thanks. We did. Say, who do you guys think you are parking here? Can't you read? Sorry, we didn't see the sign. Didn't see the sign. What kind of an excuse is that? Who are you guys? Where are you from? 291st General Hospital. What? 291st. Will you please step aside? General, huh? That was my old outfit, and they sold these 41 crates a month ago. Where'd you pick it up? Look here, this man is dying. Yeah, and I got a rush call. So what? You know what I think? I think you guys are a couple of cadaver snatchers. I'm going to take a look at this system. Oh, wait. The other one. But this is ours. That one won't be spotted so quickly. Put him in that one. I hope nothing went wrong. What good? Tim would never leave Dick. Hey, here comes an ambulance out. Shall I flash the rest of the boys? No, they're driving an army crate. That one belongs to the city hospital. That was a clever piece of work, Brewson. It almost misfired. Paul told you that corporal's name was Joseph Duggan. It was really John.
How is he? He's still under the effects of the gas. Start up the fire. Not the malady, too. Start up the fire. guy who stole this crate. Yeah, and mine. Yeah? You mean a big mug and a little guy with glasses? Yeah, with a patient on a litter. Well, I'll be a... That gorilla outsmarted me again. They pulled the switch. We've got to follow that by ambulance. How do you know where it went? Huh? That's right. Sparks, this is Patton. Put all cars on the lookout for a White City hospital ambulance. Get that? Yeah. It's carrying two killers and Tracy unarmed. Remember the bank? You've got about 60 seconds left. There's no other exit, Tracy. This is the end of the line.
So this is the baby that caused all the trouble, huh? Yes, that's the last of those devilish gas bombs, Pat. As soon as Dan has had a look at it, we'll file it in the archives of lethal weapons. I want to see you, Tracy. Well, take a good look, Dan. What's the idea of selling me out to those radio vultures? You made me a promise. Promise? Who is this fellow, Pat? Don't know. I never saw him before. You promised me an exclusive story. Story? What story, sir? He could mean the story of the capture of a gang of bank robbers, Dick. Capture? When? Where? It's all here and it's all true. Give me that. Okay, Dick? In about 25 seconds, Pat. Sorry, can't wait. Maybe I ought to tell you about it, Dan. Some other time. Aren't you going to read it? Gotta make that deadline. This is the biggest story yeah. I ever had anything to do. Dude! <laughs>